<laughs> okay. Anybody here? <laughs> okay. I think we're live. Let's wait it for it says we are. Okay. Okay. We have life. Oh, I see heart. Proof of life. <laughs> okay. All right. I see people are coming on. I am live. We are live. That's right. Okay. I'm going to. Hey, hi, Babette. Ray. Hey, Karen. All right, we're, we're doing a little bit different. Usually we're in the studio and today we're in the, um, in the garage. So um, this is a, a process that you really can't do indoors. You should not do this indoors. Uh, you need to have some really super good ventilation and this can be quite stinky with whatever you're burning. So, ciao Aldina. So, um, anyway, we're going to uh, start in just a minute. I've got my friend Rhonda here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Rhonda's been with us before, uh, and uh, she's been my buddy for a long time. And she actually um, is going to really be doing most of the demo today and uh, in presenting the Raku enamel technique. It's a very fun uh, a different way to get some really neat textures on your enamels and uh, you'll be amazed how simple it really is. Uh, the best thing is that you set yourself up for success uh, so that you don't have any issues. You should always have a fire extinguisher around when you are working with a flame. So that's one thing we have on the table. Hopefully we won't need to use it. Hey, Cindy. Uh, and um, what else? Uh, we have a variety of enamels, and uh, Ron is going to talk a little bit about those things. And you will see how simple uh, and cool this technique is. We're going to try a couple of different uh, materials that we haven't used before, so it's going to be a new experiment uh, to us as well. So if you have questions or comments, Please feel free to add them, and uh, and and I will probably be, well, I will be manning the the camera while Rhonda's doing the technique. So that way, hopefully, we can address any questions that you might have. Uh, neither one of us are authorities on this, so uh, this is just kind of a little um, view into this technique. I'm sure there's other things. Uh, that can be done. Whoop, that can be done with this technique. So, uh, we'll go over some of the the materials that we need, uh, and that would be. Let me see here. I'll move the camera a little bit here. Uh, you need a tripod, uh, a screen, trivet, and your copper pieces. Uh, there may be other things that you might have that you can use. I know there's strivets that can just fit with inside the tripod, but this is what we're using today. Uh, you'll need some clear fire spray or hairspray, uh, something to wet the enamel piece so that your enamel sticks to, uh, I mean, you spray your copper piece and you spray that so that the enamel sticks to it. Um, what else? Oh, and we have a variety of enamels, uh, mostly greens and, and a blue, and Rhonda can explain that to you a little bit. And then we also have, uh, let me see if I can move the camera here. We have a couple of different vessels to put our pieces in. This one I had for doing um, copper clay in a kiln. So it, the container looks kind of nasty, but your container needs to have a lid as well. So uh, any kind of uh, pot, we've got this little pot that we've got our uh, shredded newspaper in, and that also has a lid. 
and then, like I said, a variety of enamels and enamel sifter. And then, uh, oh yeah, you need some utility pliers to hold on to hot objects. And we have some copper blanks. And what else? Oh, uh, I'll show you the torch that I'm using. Let's see here. This is, yeah, just bring the whole thing up. Uh, just a gas canister of map gas. You can use propane as well, either one. And then uh, I have this torch hose, which connects to this. But there, you know, you can get the kind that, um, just like a hothead nozzle torch, you can also put that on there if you have that. You don't specifically have to have this, but it's nice. It gives a nice hot uh, fire or flame. And you don't have to hold it. And you don't have to hold it. That's right. I've got this uh, secured on the floor so that the can doesn't fall over either. And then I'm working on a piece of, what is this, concrete board? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Like so a heat proof surface. And um, what else? I think that's about it, really. Talk about the buffs. Oh, the buffs. Well, we'll use those later, but there are uh, a buff that we're going to use uh, to what? To take off the roughness or yes, and any... it shines it a little bit too. Okay, and shines it up. Sometimes, like the pine needles or the uh, paper the papers sticks to the hot enamel, so we'll we want to knock that off with this as well. Hi, Diane. Hi, Cindy. Okay, so uh, I'm going to turn this over to Rhonda, and then I'm going to man the camera, and we'll get started. All right, you're on. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put clear fire on our piece of copper that is clean, nice and clean. And... Um, one thing that you see here is that we have a lot of transparent greens and a transparent blue. And um, this is called glass green. And we have sea green. And we have Nile green. We have copper green. And then we have the Prussian blue. And that's the ones we're going to use today. And according, um, I did this technique when I was in Arizona, I was just goofing around, and from all the things that I've read is that you should use the transparents um, that are green or blue because they have the most copper oxide in them to make the change that we need for the iridescence that we're going to create when we put it in the fire. So I'm going to put my mask on now because... I'm getting into the powder here. I am going to start out with sea green. And it's a pretty kind of a turquoisey green, when you call it that. Yeah, I would say so. So you sprayed your clear fire on there. Yep, put my clear fire, and then I'm going to put that on. I think it's pretty well. Okay, put that on there. So let's start with the newspaper. Now the newspaper is probably going to do your smoothest um, Finish. finish on your piece whereas the other things we're going to be using today the other organics are going to be uh, have more lines and character in them so is this on already? No, I'll, okay. I'll turn it on oh, okay.
to dump your piece upside down into the paper. You do not want it to be right side up. And I always end up putting the uh, trivet in with it. I think it helps create more fire and um, it's just easier than having to deal with it. You're yeah, wasting time it. dealing with it when you want it to be as hot as possible. All right, now I'm going to ask if you guys heard everything Rhonda was saying while she was uh, when while the gas was on because that was quite loud. So if you did not hear it, then we can just talk the steps through of what she just did. All right, one said yes, one said I wasn't able to hear very well. Heard everything. Yes, I could hear. Just go ahead and walk through what you just did. Okay. Just um, first, I put the clear fire on, and then I added the enamel, put it on the trivet, and then I started with the fire down because it was still wet from when I put the clear fire on. I was trying to dry the enamel and the clear fire, and then I kept moving closer and closer, and then the enamel melted on the piece. Where am I? the piece, and then Sue added more, another layer of enamel, and then I got it red hot, and I kept following with the torch into the uh, paper, we used paper this time, newspaper, and started a fire. You need to have a fire, you just can't let it smoke, because we did this one the other day and it just smoked and see there really is not much of a iridescence to it so this we can do a do-over so we're going to do that today in the class to see how that works but we're going to let this uh, cool off a little bit and we're going to do another one now and we're going to do it in the pine straw these are dried pine needles so we're going to try that next any Someone questions? Asked, yeah, if you counter enamel. No, no counter enamel. Not necessary for this, I guess. One thing, our discs are, are domed, so that makes it so that, you know, you don't need to. I suppose if you wanted to be really um, good about the good... Uh, what, rules and regulations of enameling, <laughs> you would counter enamel, but yeah, I didn't do it. And I made some jewelry pieces, which Sue showed on the thing, but I haven't worn them yet, so we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, what gauge is this? It's probably 22, isn't 22. it? 22, you can probably use 24, 20, 22, 
whatever you have on hand that you can make your disc with, or you have your disc, and then we just domed every one of them. Okay, someone asks, enamels are new to me. What is counter enamel? That is putting the some enamel on the back to, it's kind called counter, it, it balances out what's on the front because of the, uh, what would you call it? It like adheres better on the front. Gives it more strength and yes. less likely to pop off. Right, right, right. And why add the second layer of enamel? Just, Just to give it more depth, you would think? I would think more depth, especially when you use the pine needles and stuff. It probably helps because see how, how this one has all these little ridges in it from the pine needles? This one, too, had the pine needles in it. You know, then you have extra uh, material that had melted, and it makes a better... Better coverage. Better coverage, and it makes a design. This is the one in the newspaper. See how this one is really smooth because you didn't use the the needles, the the little um, twigs or branches, and I think that makes more of a, a design a nice statement. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. a nice texture. You know, now, how long do we leave it in the pot? doesn't have to be in there very long just to kind of smoke well, it a little bit. Well, just to cool it. Okay. But I think we could take it All out. Right, let me, you want let me move the camera down. Oh, there. okay. Okay. Let me see. Here is the trivet. And look at how nice the back is. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the back is nice and fired. And here's the front. Just knock it off. Oh, yeah, but I... oh, where's the other pliers? Oh, here. There you go. Oh, here I got this in my hand. Yes. See if you can get the edges off, and then when it gets really cool, we'll buff it. I think we gotta wait to. Okay. Now, can you can you guys see? I don't know. There's still a layer of ash There's on there. There's still ash on there, but look at right here is where's here, look at right here. See how coppery that is right there? Can Does it look anything like like it? they can see that or not? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I think that view is pretty good. Okay. See, this all has ash on it yet. and we'll Pull back closer to you a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? More? Stop? No, no, that's oh. fine. That's fine. This all has the ash on it from the newspaper. See how this had burnt? See how that had burnt? Um, and I'm hoping that we can buff the, all that off and it'll be very interesting. And if not, it's a do-over. <laughs> we'll have to see. But I don't know. Okay. Let me see. How... You guys see that okay? I think so. On my end here, I'm looking. It looks like you can see it. Okay. Well, it's That's good fine. enough to hold. Oh, okay. See how I'm taking that ash off? Let's see what we got. I'm using a um, file here. It's like a fingernail file. I'm going to try them. We have all different kinds here to try. See how you got the blue, bluish color, and you got the copper color? And I don't know if this stuff will come off of the top or not. But if you do decide to put it back, like if you can do this with a kiln, but I just think it's so much easier to use it with um, the torch because you can get it instantly in the container as opposed to opening the door, getting the uh, piece out. Well, 
I think the outside looks good, but the inside probably from the well, that's it. okay. That's just a different kind of an effect. Yes, it is. But you got the bluish and you got the copperish, and then you got more of the copper, but it's more um uh what would you say? It's like a um it's more of a matte finish. Yeah, here. yeah. And it looks like it's been run through a mill with something, with some kind of paper. All right, so that's example number one for today yep. with the newspaper. Yep. Then we've got like a, a steel bucket that we're going to drop all our uh, ashes into so that we can reuse, so we can reuse the, uh, the pot. And, well, I, yeah, we're going to try a variety of different... Uh, materials just for an experiment's sake. Okay, so this time should uh, we'll do the pine needles. Got pine needles here. And what color should we use this time? Uh, well, should, should we use, use half and half? Yeah, do like half and half, do? half blue, half green. Okay. But do you want to use the clear on anything underneath as a? base or, or no. try it. Okay, now I'm going to put some clear on. And why are you using the clear? Because I know that will be asked. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm using I'm using the clear to try something else. <laughs> Just as an experiment. Yes. That's what this demo is all about. It's kind of like experimenting with different types of materials, uh, seeing what kind of effects you're going to get out of them, and uh, also because we like to play. So <laughs> that's how you learn stuff is yep. by by playing around with different things. Yep, the serendipity of it all. So Rhonda put, what is this, copper green? Nile, or Nile green. Nile green. Nile green and then Prussian blue Ooh, is I the... I uh, that. <laughs> that was bad. Bad, bad girl, bad girl. <laughs> okay. Now we can start this again. And somebody asked, what if you used white as a base? The copper wouldn't show through then. That's if, right. I think it would be not a good thing. It, it would just defeat, I think, yeah. defeat the purpose you, of you what we're trying to, to get. Yeah, you, because the green oxides are what changes into the iridescent. And if you had a white background, I just don't think would the anything. reaction with the copper and the green oxides that we're putting on would make it iridescent then. I don't think. But I never tried to use white, so. So if you try white, let us know what happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is this, got to turn this on again? Yeah, I'll turn okay. that on. I want to make sure the camera's pointed in okay. the right direction. Okay.
didn't start on fire. It didn't start on fire? No. Well, we'll find out what happens. Yes, we will. We should have had a fire and it didn't start. Oh, yep, we'll see what that does. Boy, that's really smoking. It's, smoke, it's smoking good. And that's why you don't do this indoors. <laughs> Okay, our, our next one is an experiment with uh, the maple leaf, uh, maple seeds. seeds from the maple trees that the whirly jigs, the helicopters that come down. So we were going to try that to see if we get any kind of a, a print from the seed part, the, uh, the unseed part, the, the wings. <laughs> Paula said, I wonder if you throw in a match. Yeah, probably we could have, but no matches here. So no, we, don't have any. we weren't prepared we for that. Could. It's it'll just be a do-over if it's a dud. Yeah, actually you could maybe do that do-over. Okay. And, and then we could stick it in there. Yeah, we could one. put that one back in the pine needles. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. And that's the other thing. Once you once you do this. It pretty much burns, if you have the fire, it pretty much burns up all the material in your pot. So you'll have to start with fresh. Right. Right. So. Um, and another thing, if you, if you decide you didn't like it and you were using the kiln and you put it back in the kiln to heat it up, this all goes away. This stuff all goes away. And it just becomes like this. Just gets smooth again. Just, All your texture smooth. goes away. The texture goes away. The, iridesc the iridescence goes away. Yeah, it just goes away. And then you have to do this technique again where you put it in the fire and have the oxygen taken away to make it work. Okay, should we, just, should we put um, something on here? You got to do the, yeah, the clear fire. Yeah. And Should we put the color on top? Are yeah, I think so. Besides Why not? What's that? Copper green. All right. Put that on there. Well, let me just, yeah, I'm going to do it right over here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. What? She's putting some copper green on top of the our dud from the other day that we did. We're going to We'll try see what that. happens. Yeah. And if you do want a hole in your piece, if you're going to wear it as a necklace, this one has a hole in so that you can um, put a jump ring or something, a bail of some yeah. sort. Yeah, if you want to do that, you have yeah. to punch your holes first yep. before you enamel. Right. Okay. Okay, we'll get this The gauge is 22, but you could probably use uh, any gauge, I would imagine. Yeah, 24. You could use 18 if you wanted. You could use... Um...
any more on top or no? Since it had some already. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. 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 Which one did we? Which one? Did we, this is the last one. Oh, okay. Now we've used most of the pine straw. It's pretty well gone. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Ready? Go for it. A little warm but not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna shine this one up. <laughs> don't put you don't want yeah, you, you don't, don't want, want ash in your in your good stuff, in your good enamel. And then I like to go to this little one because this one you can bend over the piece while you're shining. That's why I like this one. That, uh, I hadn't seen those before, but Rhonda said that uh, Gwen Youngblood had mm -hmm. uh, mentioned those or used those on one of her demos. And uh, they're called a Pro Shine, Pro Shine, something like that. Oh, it's uh, over there. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I know it's backwards, but I'll have it in the uh, in the handout. But it's uh, four pro quick, super quick shine buffer, and they're From very bendable. Yeah. yeah. So Amazon. I'll post a link to that um, after we're done. Now, can they oh, that looks that looks can great. They, now see, this is the poor man texture plate <laughs> that you used, and you can see this is the blue, and then that's the Nile green line you can kind of see a line but it gives the nile green see how much more coppery it is than the blue so they really are the best colors to use if you want copper but it it's very nice it's a very it nice is. one it's it even is. got a little blue going through the and i'll post a picture of these finished uh later so that you can see them up uh closer and also note which material yeah, we, we used. used on each piece yeah, you're gonna, you're for gonna, your information you're going to remember that too? well it's <laughs> that's debatable okay. <laughs> but okay. i'll try okay 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 now we're going to try the maple uh the maple seeds, seeds and see what that maple does. seeds pot of maple seeds and these are dry they're they're not uh, i dried them out so that way yes uh, we wouldn't have any moisture interfering with anything. Yep. So we'll see. We haven't tried this before, so it's an experiment for us as well. We just started looking on the ground. We got other <laughs> other items. To other pick from. yeah, other yeah. inspiration. Yep. Let's see. What? Let's try the glass screen. We're going to use the glass screen this time. Elaine, we, we just leave them in the pot till, um, I don't know, just a few minutes, five minutes maybe, and then they Tell have to the cool smoke, off. the smoke clears. Yeah, the smoke has to clear, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they have to cool off a little bit. So they don't have to be in there a long time. It's, it's already done its thing the minute you close the lid on there and have the, uh, the smoke doing the, you know, cut off Taking the air. Taking away the oxygen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the experiment with the, the maple. maple seeds. And what she's doing, I don't know if you heard it before, but she's starting off low with the flame to help dry that uh, clear fire on there. So that, uh, and also so that the enamel doesn't blow off.
could be. Yep. Let's see if we make it with this one. <laughs> We're running low on the on the uh, gas. So hopefully we can get through this one and then I'll change the tank out. <laughs> it's not looking good. just not as, as hot as, well, as forceful. Right. And now it goes in upside down. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was over eager. I was going to oh, close yeah, it right don't, away. Don't close it yet. Or might as well this Why don't you see if you can set those on fire a little bit. There <laughs> we go. Uh, maybe a little more. Stinky! Should I close it? Yeah, close it. It gets the mix again. Look at this filet. Yeah. It's wild. Alright. I'm going to change out the tank. Should be good. This is still another partial tank, but I've got so many tanks that have just a little bit of juice left in them, and I'm trying to use them up. All right, so let's bring this over here. I like the smell of that green. Yeah, <laughs> smells better than the last thing we had. Let's see. Oh, nice. I have it in the yeah I do. There it is. That's how it came out right now. We'll let it cool for a minute. So that's another one in the pine needles. With that's the, with redo. the flame. That's yeah. the flame. This one didn't have a flame, but we tried it. Okay. We, it came out pretty good. But that was the redo uh, piece. Yes, correct? we redid this and put the green over top. We took was it. This green, this green, the copper green. We took the copper green and put it over the Prussian blue. Ooh. Still hot? <laughs> oh, not bad. That one's really pretty. It is. Okay. Let's see. Let's do this one first. They kind of remind me of the um, shell of an oyster. Is it an oyster? oyster yeah, shell? the oyster shell. Yeah. Or like the mother of pearl. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. like that. Or abalone. And now we're getting more of the coppery color when we uh, buff. Elaine, you want, you want the fire to go, you know, for just a, a little bit first. Get a nice fire going. And then it'll create more smoke, uh, and then put the lid on there. Okay, there you go. Oh yeah, that one's really pretty, isn't it? Can you guys see it? Well, maybe Probably go down far. a little bit. I don't know. I'll take it. Okay, see if you can do it better. Uh -huh. Yeah, that one's that one's really cool. All right. I like a touch of that blue on there. I know. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Well, I, I do like that a lot. You know, um, that um, Prussian blue is kind of iridized anyway. So I 
think when you use it. What's that? I think when you sometimes when you use the Prussian blue in enameling, it is kind of iridescent looking when it gets done. I never really paid any attention to that or noticed. I really like. Cool. We'll try oak leaves, dried up oak leaves next. Let's see what that does. So, okay, you pick the color, Sue. Well, I'm gonna. I, I think. You want to do it? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can do it. I, I'm thinking. Uh, how about? The copper green with the Prussian blue. Okay. Want to do 50-50 or yeah, what? Yeah, we'll okay. just do 50-50. You go ahead. Okay. Or would you want to put the lighter in the middle and the darker outside? That, like a that's circle fine thing? too, See. as long as we remember <laughs> when I'm adding you know, more yeah. stuff to add it in the right place. Do light in the middle. And this piece of copper that we're using this time is kind of, um, what would you say, textured. It was textured. It was a piece that I had put through the rolling mill that I was going to use for something, and then I didn't do it. Uh, the texture on it isn't really going to affect, uh, it, affect it at all. It's not going to show. No. Probably not. Uh, it's yeah. just I was just using up the copper disc. We'll find out. Yeah, we will find out. <laughs> this is a demo of lots of experiments. New, new and exciting things. New territory. Yep. It's like a eyeball. It does. All right, so the Prussian blue is on the outside and the copper green is, is on the, the inside. inside. Can you start my engine? Yep. <laughs> fire this time. Um, I bought this uh, pot at the Goodwill store for two bucks, so 
you can't find pots with lids if you don't want to use your good stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd want to use my good stuff. No. Now, no. which was the, do you remember which one was the piece that we put the clear on? Was it this, this one? No, it was the second one, I think. Yeah, it was the second, because that was the do-over with the, with the. Right. So that's the clear. But. With the blue and the green. So is there any discernible difference, do you think? I don't think so. Because someone just asked if, if... I don't think. Okay. It was uh, just something It that, might be a little more muted, maybe, would you say? I don't know. I would think that that maybe if you wanted to pursue that, to, to just do a test on several pieces like that, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it made a difference or not, Donna. To me, don't you think that the green has the copper oxide in it to help make it uh, change iridescent better than the clear? But the clear shows the copper, would show the copper, but to me it would like protect the copper so that it wouldn't change. And that's why I never did any with the clear when I was messing around. Yeah, it was just something we heard about. I right, guess. right, right. Just another, another experiment. And Melissa, I wish you were here with us too. We miss you. Okay. All right. So, then we have one more uh, with grass, right? Yeah, we're gonna try grass. Dried grass. Dried grass. Yeah. All right. So this is the one with the maple seeds. I don't know if it'll make a difference. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's not as. Maybe when you clean off the ash, it might do something. Yeah, because there's there's a part of the maple leaf stuck to it. So. But it's a pretty color. Mm hmm. But. I don't know. It's just, you know, a series of experiments. Ooh, some of the copper is showing through. Maybe it's, that's where it landed on a seed or something. Could have been. That's actually a pretty neat It uh, is. It's pretty, pretty neat lit look. Now, what was this color? Blue and? Was this, oh, is this the one with the middle? No, that's that one. Yeah. See, we're forgetting already. <laughs> we're having so much fun. A mind is a terrible thing. <laughs> to lose. <laughs> This was the glass green. That's the That's one. right. This is Good glass job, green. Good job, Rhonda. Glass green. This is was it real... solid glass green? Yes, it was okay. just glass. Two two things of glass green. But it's um, definitely looks like a wave going through there. <laughs> that might be where it sat on a, a wing. Oh, I like that. Can you see that okay? Okay. All right, so I'm lining them up here as we're doing them. So we have that one, and then we have grass. Yep. Okay. Dawn says the clear should not change because there are no metal oxides in clear or flux yeah, that react. So really, then it's not necessary. I, I think that it's not something. You not need something you really need to. For this job. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in a different technique, but for the raccoon, probably not. Okay, so now we have some we dried have the grass. grass. 
my grass was so long, this is what it was. <laughs> I thought, man, this might work. <laughs> it came in handy. Yeah. So what color do you want, Sue, today oh, for this last matter. one? This is the last one. <laughs> All right. Um, did we do any sea green? I think we started out with C. Maybe, why don't we do all four of the greens together? Okay. Sure, why not? What have we got to lose? That's right. Let's see. Should we start with glass and work up the light? Or However you want to do it, honey. Or should we do in quarters? Let's try. Should we do quarters? I'll never Try remember, to... though, when we oh, when I go true. to put it back on. That's true. It'll well, be just whatever well, it is. Yeah, that's 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 cool. That'll be good. This will be fine, because then they're all mixed up. I'm just going to mix them all up this time. And see if it... Move the camera up here a little bit. And then I'll turn. Oh, sorry. Sorry for the big hand there. Turn it more so they can see the piece. Okay. There. Okay. can see is my hand.
there's other uh, probably other transparents that are green and there's other transparents that are blue so you probably can experiment I know there's opalescent blue. I can't think of other blue transparents right offhand. I mean, I'm sure there's a oh, yeah, lot of them. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more green, too. Yeah, so this is just what we kind of had. So that's what, that's what we we're... tried today. But you can try other things. So um, is there something in this pot? Oh, there is. That's the one with the oak leaves. Yes. Well, let's see what that one looks like. Here, I'm going to take it out. Now, let's see what that does. Ooh, that's really dark. I forgot what we used. Half and half. Again. That was the one with the oh, stuff the circle in the middle. In the middle yeah. yeah. I guess I'm just a sucker for iridized pieces. I don't know. They're pretty. Yeah, they are. And it's also fun to try different that's organic we, material. To that's see right. What you get. This is a very organic technique. <laughs> yeah, we're so organic. <laughs> <laughs> more blue. Well, I guess the center is. The outsides are pretty blue, but the center is kind of a coppery green. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's too close. Yeah, this one's quite a bit darker. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I like this one as much. But in the right light, that blue kind of looks almost cobalty. Mm-hmm. It does. It looks cobalt. Just has to catch the light the right way. Yeah, maybe when you take the pictures you should do them outside in the sun. Maybe that would uh, you know, I don't know. Some, sometimes good? sometimes oh, it works okay. and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. All right, so we're just going to wait for this last one to come out, and that's all we're going to experiment with today. We had um, six different, no, five different materials. We did the pine needles twice, a couple times. Yeah, because it didn't start on fire. And we had that do-over. That's probably... right, right. So I will, um, I'll post those results when we're done, but I will zoom in on here once we get that last piece out mm -hmm. and see what what all we have. So this was the grass, dried grass. Ooh. <laughs> wow. We got lots of kernels. <laughs> yeah. It looks kind of weird now, but it might clean up real nice. I know, it might. They're finer than the pine needles, so that's maybe good or maybe bad. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I should have brought It's a little a, warm yet. Yeah, I should have brought a bench block out here. We could have set it on there to cool it off a lot faster. Can put it on here? Like it's that. possible. It's still a little warm. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah. Looks like fun, doesn't it? it? It is fun. It's fun for us right now. Yep. All right. And maybe, you know, you probably don't have oak leaves if you live in Arizona, but when I was in Arizona, I used the mesquite uh, little bitty things that 
go all over the house. I guess they're the leaves of the mesquite dried. Uh -huh. And that made a, a nice uh, uh, pattern, too. Huh. You know, you do, you go, you got to look and see what you got around your area. That's true. It gives you a different uh, yeah. perspective of, of uses for things. Yes, yes, exactly. All right. Almost. You got it cool enough? Miss Asbestos Fingers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I like this one. <laughs> The dried grass may, may prove to be the winner, winner chicken dinner, huh? Well, that's got purples in it. That's because we used all four different kinds of the green, right? This is the one. Yeah, that's, that's all four, four yeah. greens. I don't have a pen out here, or I would label these right now, but I will label them and put them on the uh, group page later. Oh yeah, this <laughs> this is by far the best, in my opinion. It, it oh, may not be too. yours, but that really looks cool. That's got a lot of nice texture in it. The yeah, color's a lot great. Of color. yeah, yeah, the color is great. I'm good, I can take this off. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's very cool. All right, so let's see here. Can we bring it up? Just, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I'm gonna knock this thing out. All right. So this was the first one that we did. Mm -hmm. That was with the newspaper, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and then this was pine needles. Yep. This was a redo in pine needles. needles. This was one that we had done in newspaper that didn't turn out very nice. It didn't start on fire. Yeah, it didn't start on fire. That's yeah. That was the reason for that. And that we put a coat. It was blue, the Prussian blue, and we put a coat of the Nile green on top of that. I'm glad you remember these things. <laughs> <laughs> I might not remember anything else. but Okay, and then this was the maple seed leaves, uh -huh. right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And this was the oak leaves, mm -hmm. and this was the dried grass. Grass, the grass, like long grass. So, and I think of the six, I think I like this one the best, but, you know, everybody has their own opinions. Yep. And the backs don't look that bad. I mean, you know, uh, it depends on what you're going to do with them. If you uh, look at the announcement for the class, or for the demo, Today, you'll see Rhonda's pieces on there that she made things uh, with these pieces. So the backs don't show. So it doesn't really matter how the back looks uh, for a lot of the different things you might want to use. So, um, so I guess that's pretty much it uh, for today. Rhonda, are you in there? Yes. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching us today. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it was fun. I think yeah. I'm going to try to con Rhonda into coming over more often <laughs> and doing these things together because it's more fun. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, really it is. is. Yes. And on this particular technique, uh, we need two hand, you know, two extra yes. hands yes. to to turn the uh, yes. the gas on and off and hand things out. So um, control the fire. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was it was a good thing. So. Um, I'm not sure what I'll be doing next time, uh, but it'll be the week after next because we're going on the two a month schedule. Um, so I'll announce that later on. But if you do any of these, you know, please post them because yeah, I'd like to um, see. Them yeah, we too. like to see what everybody yeah. does. And this is really a relatively easy enameling technique. You just have to get some stuff from outdoors, you know, that you want to burn. That's you know, or the newspapers. Right. And you probably could use copy paper. You could shred anything probably to use. We never thought what about, about the paper in the shredder? You know, yeah, like you the could things be, that yeah. you, that's already you shredded shred up. You could probably yeah, take out a big work. mound of that and, and burn that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think so. all right. So anyway, um, that's going to do it for today. And I'll have the handout. I'll have a handout for this in just a little bit. 
Uh, I'll put a couple of links out for a little portable fire extinguisher. These are really nice to have wherever you're working with fire and also for those little sanding blocks in case you're interested in uh, getting some of those. So thanks for being with us, guys. Yes, it's thank always you a lot so of fun. much. Always fun. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.